right, here we are in the final Steven Anderson and His Lies, uh, part number 20. This one is Richard Vermbrand versus Steven Anderson. Okay, we're going to look at some quotes from this book, Tortured for Christ, by Richard Vermbrand. And I'm going to show you some things that he warns about. And uh, he was tortured for Christ, by the way, that's the name of the book. And uh, you can really, that's a good book to read. But I'm going to show you some things that he warns about that Steven Anderson in this video is actually promoting. All right. I want to show you the danger of a 501c3 government operative federal agent like Steven Anderson that's also working for the Vatican, All right? covertly working for the very system that is going to persecute, you know, save people in the future. Let's watch the first clip here. And you're going to see, now these aren't the Israel moments or the, the Jews and their lies, but I'm going to show you how this ties into this whole replacement theology thing as we go through this study. But uh, So he's going to refer here to um, 501c3 men of God, you know, the pastors. He's going to compare them to Jesus Christ. Watch this one. Son, and just as Jesus Christ was attacked by people who were trying to use taxes as a way to entangle him, as a way to accuse him, as a way to malign him and speak evil of him, the same thing is being used today where people are trying to use this issue to attack men of God who are following Christ. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, it, the 501c3 issue is not about paying taxes. Okay, it is about putting yourself under secular authority and the secular government telling you what you can and cannot say. Okay, the secular government having rules put down on you. That's what it's about. It's not about paying taxes. It's ridiculous. Again, Anderson, he, he is so good at twisting things and changing things to make his case. You know, and to compare Jesus Christ to men of God in 501c3 buildings. Sure. Sure. Right. Let's watch the next video clip here. Clear it up. And that is this issue where people are saying, hey, 501c3 churches are of the devil. Who's heard this teaching that says, oh, 501c3 churches, they're wicked, they're of the devil, they're in bed with the government, they're a state-sponsored church, all these things. You know, I'm going to show you today that that's a lie. Now, let me say this first of all. Our church, Faith Forward Baptist Church, is not... 501c3 certified. But let me tell you something. To sit there and lie and attack good churches that are 501c3, and I'm going to prove, and I've got right here printed out from the IRS tax code, section 501c3. Okay. Um, here again, Anderson Snake lies. All right. I have a whole video on this thing. Anderson is a federal agent, I think it's called, or something like that, agent of the federal government. And in that, he says, you know, in this little sermon of his, he says that he is not 501c3. We are not 501c3. But what he fails to mention is the fact that not all states have that exact code 501c3. They'll have 501c2, 501c1, 501c3a, or they'll have different designations, but it's all under the charitable organizations that are under governmental control. And that's what he is. He is still under the same classification, the same thing as the 501c3. And I proved it in my video. You know, I showed the government's own website. You know? So again, he's lying to people. Very interesting. But let's watch the next one here. And um, he'll go on to say that basically that he is like Jesus. And then later on he talks about being blasphemed. Interesting, because almost every reference in the King James Bible to blasphemy, it's a reference to people speaking that way of God. Blasphemy against God. Who does he think he is? Let's watch. But I just didn't want to preach about it because I'm sort of like Jesus. I don't care about it. Amen. But the reason that I have to preach about it today is because there are so many good men of God that are being falsely accused and lied about and blasphemed and there's so much deception that this is just spreading. Okay. So there are so many men of God out there that are being 
blasphemed. And he says, I'm like Jesus. I don't care. You know, I'm sort of like Jesus. Um, I think the Lord Jesus Christ cares. You know, when people that call themselves Christians are under governmental authority like that. And see, again, you say, but, but what are you saying, that we are to be anarchists or something like this? No, not at all. I'm saying that government, the realm of government, is to protect and to punish evildoers. But government is never supposed to come into the realm of the church. Government and church are supposed to be two totally separate things. Okay? You're not, Congress shall have, uh, what's the thing, First Amendment, Congress shall make no law regarding the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Stay out of religion. Okay? You have no right to come over here into religion. Now, if you have some religion of death like Islam, the Muslims, you know, and they're going out and killing people and being violent and stuff like that, okay, well, they're punish the evildoers now. If you have something like Catholicism that's burning people at the stake and stuff like that, okay, now that realm of physical force has to come over and say stop killing people but if you're over here and you're preaching whatever you want to preach and whatever else and stuff like this government has no right to come over here with the sword and try to tell you what to preach and what to teach that's the whole issue here it has nothing to do with paying taxes again Andrew snake takes the thing of tax paying and whether or not it's whether or not it's right and biblical and stuff like this and he tries to make that the issue it's not the issue. It's who has the final say-so, who is in control, who is in charge. That's what's going on here. But let's continue. And all kinds of people are getting out of church over it. They're, they're falsely accusing men of God. And let me tell you, I believe that this movement is of the devil. Now, All kinds of people are getting out of church. Um, well, that depends on how you define church. You see, if you define church like a Catholic, then church is a building. It's an, or, it's an organization. It's a, it's a political power, an institution. Okay. Now, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, you read through the Bible and you realize church is a reference to the people. How can you get out of the body of Christ? Anders Snake says that he believes in eternal security. But you can get out of church? Huh? Clear as mud, you know. Let's watch the next clip. Need to pay, but I believe like Jesus that we should not have to pay taxes. Okay. Andrew Snake says that uh, he believes like Jesus that we should not have to pay taxes. Well, uh, you know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Jesus Christ certainly was God, so we shouldn't see anything in here about uh, paying tribute, should we? Let's look about that. Romans chapter 13. Here we have Romans 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works. You see there? You see how the sword, the physical sword, is not supposed to be a terror to good works. People that are like religion and things like that, if you're doing good and you're not hurting people and things like that, you shouldn't have anything to fear from the military or the police or whatever other physical force of justice that's out there. They're not supposed to be a terror to good works. Okay, let's continue. Uh, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. See? For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Now look at this. Remember Anderson said, Jesus isn't for paying taxes? For for this calls pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. You know, there's a, a saying on the internet and things like that. I've heard it uh, 
spoken of, and they talk about rule of law, okay, and without rule of law. And the thing is, you know, they, a lot of people are like, oh, I can't wait for without rule of law and things break down and we'll be rid of this corrupt system and everything else. Uh, no, you don't really want that, okay? Because, see, there's a lot of people out there that are just very, very evil, very, very wicked, and the only thing that keeps them at bay is the knowledge that there are police officers out there driving around, and they don't know where the police officers are at any one time. So they go to try and rob some home and burglarize a home. The police get called. The police are on the way. See, the police are a terror to those that are doing evil. You see, and you say, but there are police that attack good people. Well, I'm sure that there are, you know, there, there are definitely corrupt police officers out there. There are definitely corrupt people in the military. They say, then we need to scrap the whole thing. No, that's not the Bible system. And the Bible system says you're supposed to pay tribute there like taxes. You're supposed to pay that to keep that power in there that can Go after the guy that's trying to break down your door and stuff like this. And, you know, and I believe, too, in, in the thing of personal defense. If, if the guy's trying to break in your door and you're armed, take care of the problem. The police might not be there in time. You know, fine. But what I'm saying about is you get a, you get a whole bunch of criminals and things like that. I want to have police there to take care of that situation. And the military should be there to protect our borders. Not let hundreds of thousands of illegal, illegal aliens come through, you know, and try to give them amnesty. Roman Catholics coming in, you know. But uh, that's the whole point there. So Andrew Snake saying, well, Jesus is for, you know, he, he uh, he's against taxes just like me. Uh, no, he wasn't. No, he certainly was not. Let's watch the next clip. Understand. Now, I know you might just do your taxes on 1040 easy form, but try running a business. And you're on all kinds of complicated, crazy stuff. You know, so what I'm saying, and you say, ah, the church isn't a business. Let me just say it, what I've said before. The only people who think business is a bad word are communists and hippies. That's the only people who think business is a bad word. You know, the Bible calls the work of the church business. You know, just look up the word business. In the Bible. Jesus said, I must be about my father's Acts chapter 6 says, we need deacons to handle this. I mean, it's just, you know, but, but oh, business, business. Okay, and, and Acts chapter 6 does not say about deacons, by the way. But the point is, you know, he says, uh, uh, you know, the church is a business. Oh, people make a big deal about the thing of business. Uh, and then what's he do? Again, he uses Jesuitical doublethink. See, he says, didn't Jesus say, I must be about my father's business? Yes, he does. But what's business in that context? Business in the context of what Jesus Christ is saying is he's saying the work that the Father would have me to do. There is ministering to the lost and things and, and, and you know all the things that Jesus Christ did. It had nothing to do with actually a, a place of business that you pay taxes and everything else like that. So again, he switches meaning on you. See, the... Government comes along and they say, you are a 501c3 incorporation under our authority. You are a business, a tax-exempt business, you know, like a chainsaw sharp sharpening business, a car washing business, a, you know, whatever type of business that you want to start. That's what the churches are in America, except they're, they're tax-exempt, so the government controls them that much more, you know. Because it's like the government says, oh, you don't, you know, you're not going to pay taxes. Okay, well then, we're going to put these controls on you. You know. And so you take that and you say somebody's saying, you know, that's none of your business. They're not talking about some place that's a brick and mortar building that you have that has hours from nine to five or something. It's not talking about that. Okay, it's saying what I do with my life. Me going out and witnessing to people and witnessing to the lost and preaching the gospel, that's my father's business. You know, it doesn't mean some organization that's signed up with the government, the federal government. So again, Anderson is, is just such a deceiver, such a liar. Let's watch the next video clip. I'm saying, so here's what they're saying. We can't take the money that comes in in the offering plate, right? And just say... Oh, you know, here you go, Brother Fairchild. 
here's a hundred bucks out of the offering plate. We can't just give him money. Does everybody understand? Because we have to use that money for things that are religious, educational, or charitable. It says in 501c3, we can't give that to private individuals. We can't just take money out of the offering plate and just hand it to somebody and just say, here you go. Here you go, Brother Fairchild. Here's a hundred bucks. Here you go. Let's just give money to people. Here, I'll stuff some in my pocket. Here, let's give you some. Let's give you some. We can't, it's illegal. Now, does anybody think that we should just be taking money out of the offering plate and just giving it to people? Let's see what the Bible says about that. Do you think that we should just be taking money out of the offering plate and giving it to people? What they do in the Bible? 1 Corinthians chapter 16. We're going to look at uh, where we got here, verses 1 through 4. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if I be meet, and if it, excuse me, if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. I didn't happen to see anywhere in there where um, they were supposed to, you know, get it okayed with the, you know, and fill out a report and things like this, the minutes of the meeting that they had and everything, and get it okayed by the local Roman, you know, authority. I, I, I seem to have missed that in there somewhere. It's not in there. What the church does with its money is no business of the federal government. Okay? None of their business at all. And again, this shouldn't even be an issue. See? I mean, you got these multi million dollar Babel buildings, and they're running, bringing in millions and millions and millions of dollars. They weren't dealing with that kind of money back then, you know? And I mean, you get some guy that's in ministry and things like that, he's not going to be ultra wealthy, you know, whatever. And it's just like, what are you doing and stuff? How are you? What tracks are you buying? What, you know, are, you bought a Bible and you, you gave it to somebody and think, we need to know records of that. No, you don't. No, you don't. You know? This is not saying don't pay taxes to the federal government. What this is saying is in matters of the body of Christ, the federal government has no right to come in and tell you what to do with your money as Christians getting together. All right? But each of these individual Christians, yes, they should be paying taxes for the secular realm, the realm of protection, enforcement of law. That's there. But again, you see the separation of the two. Mr. We'll just say Timothy, okay? Timothy comes along and he's doing whatever for a living there, you know, and, and, and you know, again, people think, you know, uh, that if you're in ministry that it should be that you retire in ministry or something like that. No, 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 no. I'm doing this ministry full-time right now because the Lord has called me to do this. But are my plans to stay full-time in this for the rest of my life and to retire one day as an older man and stuff from video ministry? No, no, no. If the Lord tells me, okay, shuts the video ministry down and says, okay, go back to woodworking, go back to doing logging or whatever else, I'd be happy to go. <laughs> you know, There's times that the ministry gets rather taxing on my patience and things, and, and I don't sleep very well and stuff like that. I slept very, very, very well back when I was working in logging. Okay, I'm not saying that when you get into ministry, you stick with that and then you don't ever do anything else after that. Okay, I will always do some type of a ministry, but right now, there is such a need for videos to be put out there and preaching to be put out there that the Lord put me into this thing full time. And the saints come along and they say, okay, here we're giving to that work. And I can show you, there are stacks and stacks of Bibles. I got a whole lower row there of Bibles that I give away to people. You know, and it's out of my own po pocket. It's out of my own cost. The body of Christ sends me money and I distribute it to other people. All right? And we live, a, we don't live a very extravagant life either. You know, again, you know, but see, do I pay taxes to the federal government and things like this to, to, to take care of the police and things like that and, and to protect and enforce laws? Yes, yes. So I'm not saying because I'm a member of the church, because I'm a pastor, then therefore I won't pay m money to the federal government somehow. No, 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 no. As Christians, you pay taxes, you pay things like property tax and, and you know, I mean, I know, yes, income tax is a pain and whatever else. We didn't originally have it and all this. You're going to make all those arguments. But the point is, you pay taxes. You go to the store, you pay taxes on things there. And you pay tax on this and you pay tax on that. The system is corrupt. I agree with that. But the point is, 
you pay those taxes in the secular realm for the government to take care of protecting you, of keeping law and order, you know, rule of law. You pay the taxes for that. But when it comes to the church, when it comes to the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, you say to the federal government, mind your own business, stay out of it. You don't need to know who I'm sending tracts to. You don't need to know how many tracts I'm buying. You don't need to know what Bibles I'm buying. You don't need to know whatever like that. You don't need to know those things. All right? That's what's going on there. I want to show you one other verse here real quick, just to continue to, or just to, again, prove this point. Acts chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. Because we're going to see this thing, Anderson coming out and saying, this is illegal and you're doing things illegal and stuff and you're tax evasion and fraud and all this other stuff. Talking like a federal agent, you know. Acts chapter 4, verse 5. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. So all the big shots there. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have ye done this? Exactly the same thing that, these, that the federal government is trying to do now. Oh, you're in ministry. Are you 501c3? Uh, no, it's none of your business. Stay out of matters of the faith, out of the church. What I do for the Lord is between me and Him. You know, I'm not going to get anybody's authority be officially ordained and licensed to preach. It's not going to happen. Why? Because the Catholics come in and they get control of the whole thing and then you're just one of their hirelings. Is all that it is. Can't you people figure that out? Those of you who defend Anderson? Of course not. Because you're about half brain dead. But let's continue here. Next video clip. Religion nothing to do with charity, nothing to do with education. We could just spend $9,000 on political campaigning and still be in compliance with this. Okay, now here he's giving just a rough estimate, $9,000. He's saying that's like, a, would be, we'll just say that's 10% of our income here, okay? Um, and we can spend 10% of our income here as a church, a government institution, we can spend 10% and still be in compliance with the federal government. 10% of our income on political type things and whatever else and still be in compliance. What if the Lord tells you to spend more than 10%? Hmm? The federal government says 90% of your income, you know, has to go back to charitable causes and less than 10% can go to, 10% or less can go to uh, political causes. What if the Lord tells you to go with 12%? Well, sorry, Lord, the federal government said I can't. You see the problem? Let's continue. We could go out and donate, we could go donate 9,000 some dollars to some pro-life thing that's trying to get something on the ballot or $9,000 to some, you know, whatever political cause and still be in compliance with this statute. And then when we take the sermons, I preach 152 sermons a year. I could take seven sermons a year and not even open the Bible, put the Bible away, not even open the Bible and just preach politics. Nothing about the Bible. Pure politics and just speak on politics for seven entire sermons and still be in compliance with this. Isn't that, isn't this so restrictive? Okay, again, double think here. Um, I am only allowed to, I mean, and, and he changes, he doesn't say I'm only allowed. He says, I can preach seven out of 152 sermons about politics and I can still be in compliance. So in other words, what you're saying, let's reverse this thing. What you're saying then is you, out of 152 sermons, you're only allowed to do seven on politics. Again, what if the Lord calls you to do eight or nine? Ten. Ooh, that's really dangerous. 
isn't this so restrictive? Oh yeah, when when you're talking about you know uh, over ninety percent of your sermons are controlled and you can't talk about a certain subject, uh, yeah, I'd say that uh, you're being controlled. Unreal. Let's so watch the next clip. Of men, so man is adding commandments here, saying, "Hey, you must." Have a church that is illegal, and you must pay the pastor under the table, which is a felony. Where does the Bible say you must commit tax fraud to be right with God, and, and you must commit felony and pay the pastor under the table? It doesn't say that. Hmm. Felony, tax fraud, illegal. Um, is this guy a Bible believer or an agent of the federal government? Sure sounds like an agent of the federal government to me. I mean, show me in Scripture where they are using that kind of terminology. Paul comes along and he says, You guys gave money to the, to the poor saints of Jerusalem and you didn't report it? That's tax fraud. We're going to be in trouble. This is illegal. We have an illegal church here. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, I'm sure Paul did that a lot. Let's watch the next video. And first of all, let me just say this. It is wickedness to be a false accuser. Yeah. And when you're saying every church that's 501c3 is not a scriptural church, or even every church that's incorporated, which our church is incorporated, but we're not 501c3. No double think there again, you know. I mean, our church is incorporated, but we're not 501c3. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, all right, you know. And of course, I'm a, you know, accuser of the brethren. So I'm deceptive and horrible and satanic and everything. Sure. Sure, Steve. Right. Let's continue. And I said, well, how do you pay the pastor wages? He said, well, you know, we just, we, well, we give the pastor, we just don't call it wages. You know what that's called? Felony tax fraud. So according to him, if I don't take my money under the table as pastor, but the, ah, the pastor shouldn't be paid. Uh, I guess you weren't here for that sermon where I, I made that look pretty stupid using scripture. No pride there or anything. But, you know, he's like, you know, oh, well, the men that are being paid underneath the table, you know, under the table, their numbers are not reporting to the federal government that that's a felony tax fraud. Really? So a guy comes up to a preacher, a guy that's in ministry, and says, here, this is a gift for you, brother. The guy has to say, oh, thank you. I have to report this to the government. Okay. You know, I remember a brother said to me the one time he was out, you know, doing street witnessing and things like this, passing out tracts, and some guy came up and he said, here's a $100 bill. Buy more tracts with that. I believe in what you're doing. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I guess he should have reported that to the federal government, right? Sure he should have. <laughs> Wrong. I mean, show me this stuff in Scripture. And again, see, if the government, the federal government is allowed to get into this realm of the church and they start to look at every single transaction that you're making, and they can then say, uh, you know, no, we don't want you to do this or we don't want you to do that. See, you're going to the government and getting permission to preach and to do the work that the Lord would have you to do. I mean, what are you going to do in, in communist China? They say the Bible's illegal. You can't print Bibles. Russia, you know, Romania, you know. Uh, you go over there and you say, um, I'd like to uh, print Bibles. Can I have your permission? Because i got to report everything. I don't want to be guilty of a felony tax fraud. Sure, yeah, they're going to say, oh, well, thank you for being so honest and coming to us, and, and you can print all the Bibles you want. Yeah, right. Let's continue. Okay, 1 Corinthians 9, Acts chapter 6. I mean, on we get, you know, that's a whole sermon. But anyway, so basically, I'm an idolater, have received the mark of the beast. I am worshiping other gods because I'm not willing to, to commit felony tax fraud by just paying myself under the table. Now, here's what's funny. As the church member, you donate money to our church, you get what? A tax what? A write-off. So if you donated $5,000 to our church, you write that off because you gave that to a charitable organization, right? So I guess here's what they want. They want you to come and give your offering in cash. Now you can't write it off, right? 
But then I don't pay any taxes as the pastor. I take it all under the table and just keep it all. You pay extra. As the church member, you pay more. I pay nothing. Sounds like a good deal. Maybe I should rethink this sermon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting how he defends the thing of charitable write-offs, you know. And again, show me that one in Scripture. You know, they gave the, you know, the Corinthians, you know, Paul says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, you know, when I come, you know, make sure that you have your offerings ready so I can take them up to Jerusalem and I'll bring back the receipts so that you can write that off in your taxes. And by the way, when you do that, when you write off your giving on your taxes, you're actually inviting litigation. You're actually inviting the IRS to come and audit you because they see this money going someplace and they go, hey, what's this all about? You're actually inviting audits to come. And I've known a lot of people that are big givers and things like this. Big, they, they give donations to like, you know, I heard, you know, charismatic organizations and stuff. And the IRS actually came and audited them for that. See, I believe that when you give money, you shouldn't let your how is it, your left hand know what your right hand is doing, you know? And you give that money to the Lord, you say, bye-bye money. I trust, Lord, that you're going to have that ministry do what is necessary with that money. And you look and you see the ministry and you say, they're coming out with good information. There's fruit in that ministry. There's things that are being done for the Lord in that ministry. Well, praise the Lord. I know that that money is being well spent. There's Bibles that are being given away. There's tracting being done. There's this, there's that, whatever else. That's a good ministry to, for me to be involved in. And your rewards come at the judgment seat of Christ. See, that's the whole point of giving to ministries because they're doing things that you can't do. You see? Some guy says, I'm going to go to Africa. You say, oh, I think I'll go too. What about your wife and children? Oh, yeah. Oh, what about your job? What about this? What about that? Oh, yeah, I guess I can't go. But you can go by supporting the missionary. You see? And then when he's over there and he's doing things and people get saved and people's lives are changed and whatever else, he's giving Bibles to people and translating the Bibles or whatever, whatever like that, you have a part in that. You've made wise investments, you see. It's like a guy that's into the stock market and he's investing in all these different companies and he's not going and working physically in each of those companies, but because he's invested into them, he's getting money back. That's how it is as a Christian. You give money to ministries so that at the judgment seat of Christ, you get rewards back. You don't say, I'm going to give my money so that I can write it off as a, as a on my income tax. But let's watch the final clip here. Then I'm going to read some quotes from the Richard Vermbrand book. Needlessly. And Lord, I pray that you would bless every Baptist church and even every non-denominational church in Arizona, if they preach the gospel and preach the King James Bible, Lord, if they believe the salvation we believe, Lord, I pray that you would bless them this morning because they are our friends, not our enemies. Even if they don't agree with our politics, even if they don't agree with us on, on Bible prophecy, Lord, bless every church in Arizona that preaches salvation by faith alone and preaches your word out of the King James Bible. Lord, bless them all. And in Jesus' name we pray. You realize that Anders Snake just prayed for God's blessing upon all 501c3 Babel buildings? But he's saved. He's just, you know, a little deceived and whatever else. Sure, sure. Keep telling yourself that. But I want to read some quotes from this very excellent book here, Tortured for Christ. You can see it here. Uh, really, really a neat book. Um, just really amazing. I would recommend it for your library. Um, is he right in all of his doctrine? You know, Richard Vermbrand? No. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't believe for one second that he was a lost man. And he says some very interesting things. You see, right now, brethren, we are in a time as Christians where we can, you know, we still have freedom. We still have the ability to come make videos like this and, and talk about things. And we still, you know, I know some of you have said from other countries that I couldn't get away with what I do in your country. You know, and that's very sobering for me to think about because the time is going to come if the Lord tarries when I'm probably going to get myself in a lot of trouble for some of the things that I speak. You know, I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord will protect us and everything else. But I realize that uh, freedom can break down very quickly. And this is how it happens right here. 
This is what, you know, Richard Vermbrand is explaining what happened in the churches, you know, before the communists took over. So let's look here. We have page 16 of Tortured for Christ. He says, I attended the Congress of the Baptists in the town of Resita, a Congress under the red flag, where the anthem of the Soviet Union had been sung with everyone standing. The president of the Baptist praised Stalin as a great teacher of the Bible, like people did with Hitler, and proclaimed that Stalin did nothing but fulfill the commandments of God. It must be understood that the true Baptists, whom I love very much, did not agree with and were very faithful to Christ, suffering much. However, the communists elected their leaders and the Baptists had no choice but to accept them. Those who became servants of communism instead of Christ began to denounce the brethren who did not join them. There you go. 501c3. You see it? And you're going to see this thing come more clearly. State-controlled churches. And they've denounced those. You're not 501c3. You're bad. You're, you're having an illegal church. Tax evasion. Tax fraud. It's like Stephen Anderson's saying. Look at this. The official church is one registered with and controlled by the government. Membership of official churches in many totalitarian systems today usually numbers less than 10% of the Christian population. The others prefer to worship underground. Amen. How many people are worshiping underground already? Yeah, praise the Lord. It's great. Here we have next page, page 17, uh, talking about creating Romanian underground church. The communists forbade all this, and the official church complied. What did Anderson just say? Doing things, you know, without reporting to the government is fraud. It's illegal. What's he part of? He's a part of the official church. He's a Catholic. Independent, fundamental Catholic. Sure he is. Not independent of the Catholicism. Independent of the Lord and the Holy Spirit, perhaps, but not uh, the Catholics. But anyways, here we have page 22. Once I asked a Baptist, how is it that you know no joy? He answered, how can I be joyful when I have to hide from the pastor of my church that I am an earnest Christian, that I lead a life of prayer, that I try to win souls? The pastor of the church is an informer of the secret police. Definitely going on here in America the FEMA pastors and all this other stuff, it's already here. And I mean, Stephen Anderson is listed on the IRS's website as an agent, a federal agent. I showed it in my video. You say, well, it's just a tax designation. It's just, why, why are you called an agent? And he, and he just said in these videos, I'm only allowed to preach seven out of 152 sermons. Only seven of them can, can be about politics. I have to be in compliance. And some of you still think he's a legitimate, huh? Next page, page 23. As there are many who believe they are Christians and in reality are not. Sounds like Richard Vermbrand is preaching, you know, repentance and all this other stuff, work salvation, you know, like I preach and things. Sure. You know, when you live in reality, when you're not living in this happy little experiment called America where you can just live in total wicked sin and still be a Christian, you know, when you live in the reality of the real world where Christians get persecuted and Christians are hated and everything else, you realize that becoming a Christian is a changed life, a new life. There's a big change that happens, you know. Page 29, the underground church met secretly in homes, in the woods, in basements, wherever it could. If you're smart, you'll start doing that now. Don't wait till the uh, uh, jackbooted thugs are kicking the doors into the Babel buildings and, and hauling people off to camps. Get out while you still can. Here we have page 52, the Westerners, especially Americans, are very easily deceived. This book was written back in the, I think, 1950s, 1960s, something like that. And he's saying that the Americans are very, e very easily deceived. What are we now? Good night. Page 61. 
The early church worked secretly and illegally, and it triumphed. We must learn again to work in the same manner. But not according to Stephen Anderson. According to Stephen Anderson, a church that's illegal is a bad thing. You dare not be illegal. Make sure that you're in compliance. Down here a little bit further, it says, If we agree to work like this, to come back to the methods of early Christianity, we can work effectively for Christ in these closed countries. Again, oh, you should be, you shouldn't be, you be guilty of tax evasion and fraud and all this other stuff. Okay, what are you going to do in a country that says Christianity is illegal? You're going to go to them for permission to preach and teach? Page 78. One after the other, I met great preachers and pastors of the different churches and even bishops who simply confessed with great sorrow that they were informers for the secret police against their own flocks. I asked them if they were prepared to give up being informers, even at the risk of being imprisoned themselves. All answered, no, and explained that it was not fear for their own persons that restrained them. They told me of new developments in the churches, things that did not exist before my arrest, that to refuse to be an informer could mean the closing of a church. Oh, you know, how terrible. In every town, there was a government representative for the control of cults a man of the secret communist police. He had the right to call any priest or pastor whenever he liked and to ask him who had been in church, who took frequent communion, who was zealous in religion, who was a soul winner, what people confessed, and so on. Again, it's a known fact that the Catholic, Catholic confessional booth has been one of the greatest sources of intel of ever. Ever. Now, you got, of course, you've got Facebook people just blabbing all their personal information on there, so they have that now too. But the point is, you go to your pastor at the church that you go to, this Babel building that you go to, and you tell him private things and stuff like that, chances are you're talking to an informer of the federal government. But I'm sure Stephen Anderson's not an informer of the federal government or anything. No, no, no. Never. Never. He's a patriot. Page 84. The underground church is a poor and suffering church, but it has few lukewarm members. You know? Yeah. And again, you know, oh, you're leaving church because you're lazy and you don't want to, you know, serve the Lord and everything. No, those of us that have left the official Bible buildings do so because we want to study the Bible more. We're finding our answers elsewhere than the hirelings, you know, and stuff like this. We're not interested in the social gospel and turn around and greet those around you and that we have a special meal and who can sign up to come and clean the toilets at the church and stuff. We don't want that anymore. We want that real life that is serving Jesus Christ seven days a week. That's what we want. And we're the ones that are going to have to suffer for Jesus Christ in the future as more and more of these hirelings like Stephen Anderson persecute those of us who say no to Babel buildings. Page 85. Whoever has known the spiritual beauty of the underground church cannot be satisfied anymore with the emptiness of some Western churches. Written years ago, into something. I suffer in the West more than I suffered in a communist jail because now I see with my own eyes Western civilization dying. Oswald Spengler wrote in Decline of the West, You are dying. I see in you all the characteristic stigma of decay. I can prove that your great wealth and your great... Um, your great poverty, your capitalism and your socialism, your wars and your revolutions, your atheism and your pessimism and your cynicism, your immorality, your broken down marriages, your birth control that is bleeding you from the bottom and killing you off at the top in your brains can prove to you that, uh, that there are characteristics, characteristic marks of the dying age, ages of ancient states, Alexander in Greece and neurotic Rome. And it, you might have already seen the, the date there because I didn't move it. I moved it too far down, but look at the date. This was written 1926. <laughs> oh boy. And here we are almost 100 years farther down the sewer. That is America, modern America. You know, the guy's writing, he's saying, your country's falling apart. And it was back in 1926. You know, they began to take the gold and everything, the New Deal, you know, that FDR brought in. They stole the gold from us. And then in the 1960s, under uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, they stole the silver. And then in the 1980s, uh, 1982, they took the copper. So your copper pennies aren't even copper anymore. It's a little tiny bit of copper over top of zinc. You know, 
the old copper pennies were almost pure copper. But our country's getting better. Sure it is. Here we have page 88. But our official church leaders, like most official church leaders of the communist countries, worked hand in hand with the secret police. Going on here in America too. Page 90. Some leaders of denominations are not of the bride of Christ. They are leaders in a church in which many have long since betrayed the master. When they meet someone of the underground church, a martyr, they look at him strangely. <laughs> Hi <laughs> to all the uh, house church Christians out there. And you get people and they're like, oh, where do you fellowship at? I worship the Lord at home. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Been there, <laughs> done that. <laughs> Page 94. It is like the church in the first centuries. What seminaries did those who turned the world upside down for Christ attend? Did they all know how to read? And from where did they receive Bibles? God spoke to them. We of the underground church have no cathedrals, but is any cathedral more beautiful than the sky of heaven to which we looked when we gathered secretly in farce? The, chirpings of, the chirping of birds took the place of the organ. The fragrance of flowers was our incense. And the shabby suit of a martyr recently freed from prison was much more impressive than priestly robes. We had the moon and stars as candles. The angels were our acolytes who lit them. I have found truly joyful Christians only in the Bible, in the underground church, and in prison. Wow. How about that? Next page. The faithful underground church has thousands of members in such places. They have secret meetings in basements, attics, apartments, and fields. You say, well, you know, we'll, we'll do that, Brian, when persecution comes. I'm going to stay at my Babel building, and we're just going to stay there. We're going to hold the fort, you know, and stuff like this. <laughs> and, and, you know, we're going to stay there until the persecution comes, until they're kicking down the door, and then we'll be ready for the house church. No, you won't. No, you won't. If you can't get out now... You're not going to get out. Simple as that. Page 98. This was the situation in nearly all denominations. The leadership of the Romanian Baptist um, was imposed by force denouncing the real Christians. In Russia, the leadership of the Baptists did the same. The president of the Romanian Adventist, Tachici, Tachici, whatever, told me that he had been an informer of the communist secret police from the first day they came to power. Rather than close every church, they, though they decided, or they had, though they have closed many thousands, the communists shrewdly decided to permit a few token official churches to remain open and use them as windows through which to observe, control, and eventually destroy Christians and Christianity. They decided that it would be better to let the structure of the church remain and turn it into a communist tool to control Christians and to deceive visitors coming to their lands. This is years ago, though, folks. This stuff doesn't happen anymore. You know? Page 116. He never said that we need governmental permission to evangelize. Speaking of Jesus. Well, not according to Stephen Anderson. Because Stephen Anderson is just like Jesus. You know, and all, all the other 501c3 men of God. You know? Sure. Though the communists and other types of governments closed their churches or replaced them with more reliable ministers, you know, let me just stop there real quick too. I used to go to this Methodist Babel building years ago and they were, and he was always afraid of uh, a new pastor being brought into his diocese or something like this and he'd be replaced and sent someplace else. Hmm, interesting. Let's continue. It says, These pastors continue their ministry more effectively than ever by working secretly in underground meetings, in barns, attics, basements, and hay fields at night, or anywhere believers gather secretly. Thousands of lay Christians evangelize without permission. Persecution has always produced a better Christian, a witnessing Christian, a soul-winning Christian. That's a, a very tough thing to handle for us Christians here in America that have had it so good. Um, but it's there. I don't like to think about the persecution things that could come to America, but I'm glad I'm out of the Babel buildings. I feel much safer out here. Page 118. They risk their freedom by secretly ignoring the official limitations and ministering to hungry souls all around them. 
Interesting. Page 122. That word there, I'm not going to even try. The Teacher's Magazine of August 23rd, 1966 states that a demonstration was organized in the streets of Rostov on Don by Baptists who refused to register their congregation and to obey their so-called leaders appointed by the communists. Okay. Interesting that they would have this protest and the Baptists over there are refusing and saying, we will not register our churches. In America, we will register our churches because otherwise it would be Ill illegal. Weird. Page 127. They fought against the communist poison and against the treacherous leaders of the official church about which they write in one of their secret manifestos. In our day, Satan dictates and the church accepts all the decisions which are contrary to the commandments of God. Yeah, sure. And as time is going by, you're hearing more and more of these Babel buildings whining and complaining. We're being forced, you know, they're saying we're going to be forced to, to, you know, to do uh, sodomite marriages and things like this. To per perform is the word I was looking for. Perform sodomite marriages and, oh, it's so terrible. Blah, 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 blah. You signed up for it. Your government-controlled institution, what do you think is going to happen? Page 128. On the 1st of May, the Christians of the villages Kopsig and Zahara, Zaharovka, sorry, I'm really butchering that, but having no churches, organized a secret service in the forest. They also organized meetings under the pretense of having a birthday party. Many Christian families with four or five members had 35 birthdays a year as a cover for secret meetings. <laughs> you got to love that pretty neat. Neither prison nor tor torture can frighten the Christians of the underground church, just as the early church persecution only deepens their dedication. Uh, submitting to the human regulations, the communist laws, the official church has deprived itself of the blessing of God. In a secret letter published in Kalunda, Siberia, Christians say that the official Baptist leadership has destroyed the church and its true servants in the world in the same way as the high priests, scribes, and Pharisees betrayed Jesus Christ to Pilate. But the faithful underground church works on. Okay? Um, there, you know, it's talking about this guy. The communist newspaper quoted from one of his sermons, We must believe our Savior as the first Christians did. For us, the principal law is the Bible. Okay? We recognize nothing else. For us, the only law is the Bible. All right? And that's the way it should be. That is the true statement of a Bible-believing Christian. Okay, The only thing that we need to recognize as our sole authority in all matters of faith and practice, and not just repeating that and then disobeying it, the only thing that we should recognize as our authority is right there. Not right here, not all that back there, right there. That's it. That's your final authority right there. Okay? So... That's going to be it for these Stephen Anderson and his lies videos. I'm not going to put any more time into making more of these. I could just work for the rest of my life debunking Stephen Anderson. But quite frankly, it's been done. Um, you know, if he comes out with more just absurd, ridiculous things, I'm going to keep fighting until he's off, you know, out of the ministry and, and he's exposed for the lying uh, papist that he is. And uh, so, you know, I can't say, well, I'll never talk about Stephen Anderson again. I, I might. I have no idea. I don't know what the Lord wants there yet. I don't know what Stephen Anderson is going to do yet. But uh, the fact of the matter is that Stephen Anderson is very dangerous. Okay. Um, he, is, he has been raised up as sort of a um, counterinsurgency, or I'm not even sure what the, the word would be, but uh, basically somebody that is raised up to make Bible-believing Christians like myself, like many of you, Anderson is there to make us look bad. And he comes out and he's saying all these vicious things about sodomy and sodomites. And then it gets us all labeled that we hate sodomites. Um, Westboro Baptist Church, you know, they were coming out and they were attacking sodomites and going around saying, thank God for dead soldiers and all this other stuff. I mean, ridiculous. And then they're, of course, very anti-Israel as well. How telling, you know. And so Anderson comes and he's doing a lot of the same things. You know, and, and why? To make Bible-believing Christians look bad. That's the whole thing. Uh, what do they have planned for Stephen Anderson? I don't know. 
I'm not sure what they have planned for him. But if we are silent about Steven Anderson and if we just kind of go along and just, well, you know, I think he's saved. He's just a little off in some issues. If we do that and we don't denounce this heretic for what he is right now, um, when he eventually is brought down by the news media, and notice they give him a lot of attention too. I mean, you know, what's the best way to get rid of some crazy nut or whatever that's preaching all kinds of hate? Just ignore him. Don't give him press. But why is the press giving so much attention to Steven Anderson? Hmm, interesting. Why is it the President of the United States, Obama, actually said in an article, you know, and I can put it up here, he says that, you know, if he could get rid of uh, a couple of different people, one of them would be Steven Anderson. Are we seeing some uh, good cop, bad cop here? You know, some uh, professional wrestling, if you will, where you get this guy here is this guy's worst enemy, and then they become friends, and they and they, but you know, they're friends, and they actually, in reality, they they appear to be worst enemies, you know, uh, for the show, you know. Oh, nothing like that, I'm sure, you know. Yeah. But uh, be on the lookout for the Steven Anderson guy. Um, and you say, well, Brian, you know, you got through this whole thing, and what did this have to do with the Jews? Well, I thought it was kind of interesting because Richard Vermbrand was a Jew, a saved Jew, you know. And this whole system of a government-controlled church all goes back to Catholicism because Catholicism has the spiritual and the temporal sword. That's what they teach. They teach that they have political authority and power and the right to tell certain governments what to do. So it goes right back to that. It goes back to why are they fighting to replace Israel? Why are they saying that they have replaced Israel? Why? Because they want that land. They want to take away the promises. Just like Herod said, kill all the young men, the, the male children and stuff like that, under the age of whatever it was, I can't think right now of the scripture, but you know these young newborn baby males, kill them all. Why? He wanted to stop God's purpose. And the Catholic, the Vatican now is coming in and they're saying, if we can just get control of that nation of Israel, if we can just get that land, maybe we can fight off the Lord. They're that deceived, in other words, that we can stop the Lord from coming in and fulfilling his purpose. If the Vatican could kill all of the Jews, if they could just go and slaughter every single Jew out there, it would stop God's purpose. It would stop God's plan. They know that. That's why they're trying to do it. That's why Stephen Anderson is trying to do it. And this thing of him promoting state churches is just so deadly dangerous. I'll tell you that right now. It's just really, really, really bad. As I've been saying the whole way through this study, look out for Stephen Anderson. Uh, he, is, he is very, very dangerous. And I'll tell you what, it is, it is chilling. I read that book, Tortured for Christ, and the things that, that he went through, stuff is just terrible. You can't even imagine. Ripping your fingernails off, just getting the pliers or whatever and just going like this and just ripping your fingernails off while you're still alive. Just do it. The next one, rip and do like that. Torturers, all kinds of horrible perversion stuff going on in these prisons. Why? Well, because there was a country that uh, allowed communism to come in and take over. And you study com communism, it goes back to Catholicism. You know, we recently had, uh, I heard here that uh, Rick Warren now has come out openly and said that uh, Catholicism is the, is the right way and whatever else, and we should all become Roman Catholics again. It's scary. It's real scary. And you get a guy like Steven Anderson, he could do some kind of a violent thing and bring laws down upon us. That's what they're setting him up for. I believe that. And that's why it's important for us to come out right now and say, he's not one of us. Steven Anderson is not a Bible believer. He is not a Bible believing Christian. And like I said, if you're Jewish out there, you need to understand these things. You need to understand the New Testament is not against you. The New Testament doesn't hate you and put you down and say that you've been replaced. That's a lie of Catholicism. So, that will be it. And again, like I said, this is the last video. And I did this for a reason. I did 20 videos plus the introduction. Um, because 21 divided by 3 is 3 sevens. 777. Seven, seven. And in the book of Revelation, you have 
seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials. And I believe Stephen Anderson is going to hit, he's probably not going to survive the whole thing, but he's headed for that time period, the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And you say, well, Brian, what if Stephen Anderson would repent of his beliefs and things and get saved? That'd be great. But it would ruin his ministry. You know, he would lose a lot of his following. And I think that, you know, he is very compromised and in with some very wicked groups of people, and it would probably end up costing him his life. And honestly, I think he's too prideful to really, truly repent of what he's been preaching. And, you know, he just, he's a very dangerous individual. And I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ rebukes him and stops him and exposes him for the fraud that he is. So that will be it for these videos. Thank you very much for watching.